Hello everyone, I'm JG and welcome back to Music Forever, where today I'm going to be reviewing the new album from Drake, Scorpion. Now when it comes to Drake and his music, I've never really been a massive fan of his work. I think the guy definitely has potential to release a good project, even a great project, yet I really feel that over the last decade or so that he's been releasing music, that he hasn't really done that. I just feel like lots of times his potential really gets wasted on making some more forgettable, un un uninteresting music, really. Though the guy has definitely had a lot of success in the mainstream, that is undeniable. Coming into this album here, though, I was interested to see what was going to go on here for a couple of reasons. First, this is Drake's first double album that he's ever released, uh, and those are always interesting uh, in some way, either good or bad. And also, this is of course the first Drake full release that we're getting following his recent beef with Pusha T that followed after the release of Pusha T's album, Daytona. If you're interested to hear my thoughts on that album, I actually reviewed it. You could check that out, but, um, you know, many people, of course, saying that Drake easily lost that beef. I, I definitely agree with that, considering Pusha T just kind of destroyed him um, in that one track he released. So I was interested to see what Drake was going to do coming into this project, if he was going to respond anywhere on here. And he definitely does have some lyrics on here kind of about that. I'll get into that a bit later on. Uh, but overall, I, I this is just not a project that I'm enjoying. This thing just feels way too bloated, way too uninteresting, and just not very good to listen to. I mean, Drake, many of his more recent output, I feel like has been very bloated as it is. Uh, I believe, Views, I believe it was, it was like an hour and 20 minutes in length, and then that More Life playlist he dropped last year that I even bothered to listen to just because I, I just didn't have the time to listen to that, I just didn't really care to. That was also very long from what I remember. And in this project here, of course, it is long given that it's a double album. It's like an hour and a half total, uh, and it's just it's just way too much. This didn't need to be a double album. There's not even one album's worth of content here that's actually good and interesting. You know, lots of people say with double albums that, you know, sometimes there's like, you know, an album's worth of good material in there, and there's another album's worth of filler. Uh, but that's not the case with this album. There's not even an album's worth of good or, or decent material even. There are a couple tracks scattered throughout this lengthy project that I think are decent on their own. However, when you throw them in with everything else that's going on here, it just, you, they just don't stand out all that much. They're not good enough to really be highlights that I'd want to return to. And they just kind of blend in with everything else. How, you know, just bland everything else in is it just really pulls down the quality of those, you know, more decent cuts on here. Even with each of the two discs on here having supposed to be uh, based on different uh, aspects of Drake's sound. The first disc is supposed to be a hip-hop album. The second one's supposed to be an R&B album. It still ends up feeling very uninteresting. I do think that the first disc here is the better of the two. The hip-hop album, for one thing, it's shorter than the second one. It's only like, uh, it, it's, they're not all too different in length, but it is the shorter of the two. And overall, it's, it's just very average through and through. It's just not super interesting. There are some cuts on here that, like I said, do manage to be, you know, maybe have some, you know, glimmer of uh, something interesting in them, like the opening track on here, which I feel with Drake's lyrics on here, uh, kind of got me somewhat interested in this project. He kind of feels like he's about to, you know, he's kind of setting himself up here to really go in on this project. But of course, there, there never really is a follow-up to that. But then that opening track is one of the better tracks across this these two discs that we get here. The first, uh, out, uh, the first uh, disc here also has the track God's Plan, which was originally released as part of the Scary Hours EP he dropped earlier this year. I reviewed that also. If you want to check it out, I'll have it linked in the description. Uh, but, you know, I wasn't really a fan of the song when it initially dropped, and I've heard it so much since then, just because it's been played everywhere, that I'm, I'm not really excited to hear it again in the context of this album. And I do think it, it's maybe one of the better cuts on here, simply because Drake brings a bit more energy here on this track, but I, I still really don't care for it all that much. And throughout this thing, there's also just lyrics that I really don't care for. When it comes to the whole Pusha T sort of beef thing, Drake lots of times on here, uh, he doesn't really respond in like a very solid format. He doesn't really go after Pusha T in a very you know solidified form, I guess you could say. 
he does have some smaller jabs here or there, but lots of times he's just kind of, you know, acting a bit more like a victim, I guess you could say, kind of playing off that more soft side, I guess you could say, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but, you know, considering he was the one uh, that, you know, he said he was going to have a response on here, I'm kind of disappointed with what we ended up getting. He also has lyrics spread across both of these discs about his child that P Pusha T kind of revealed uh, in that one track of his that he uh, dropped uh, during that beef. And some, some of these lyrics uh, are, aren't that great, honestly. Like the one track, on, I believe it was Emotionless, where Drake says that he w wasn't hiding his kid from the world, but he was hiding the world from his kid. That, that lyric right there, it sounds like what someone would have written if they were writing like a Drake parody track, or like a, a track that's trying to just joke about with Drake's sort of melodramatic type of lyrics. I couldn't believe he actually put that on there. It was it just was not good overall, and I'm definitely going to implement those lyrics into some, some type of joke at some point here on this channel, so I'm just warning you guys in advance. It, it will come up at some point. Um, and you also have the closing track across both of these discs, which also seems to, you know, talk about uh, his child to some extent. But I didn't really find it all that interesting, the song. It, it just really blurred by me. Mostly because much of the second disc just isn't all that interesting. It's the more R&B leaning of these two discs, though he does occasionally uh, rap on it as well. Uh, I believe mostly on the track Nice For What, which is one of the more popular tracks from this album released as a single, and I do think it's one of the better tracks across these two discs, because Drake once again brings some energy to this track, and it sounds decent on its own. I'm not in love with it, but it's it's an alright cut uh, by itself. It's just really placed in the context of this album. I really just can't be bothered to ever really return to it all that much. And there's also the track Blue Tent, which has Future on the track as well, where Drake is rapping a bit more. I also felt like this was maybe one of the better tracks as well, just because it stuck out a little bit more. Uh, but still, it, it just it wasn't all that interesting through and through. And much of the R&B tracks on this second half are just very spacey, very, you know... They're just typical Drake R&B tracks, pretty much. If you heard a Drake R&B track, you know what you're getting on this second disc. And he really just does not do a whole lot with his sound. He doesn't really expand it. He doesn't really, you know, progress it anywhere. He just kind of delivers it, delivers it to you for like an entire disc. And it's just not very interesting. The whole second disc here, uh, it's, it's just very boring for the most part. Uh, all I can think about when listening to the second disc is that I'd much rather be listening to something else. In fact, I'd much rather be listening to the first half of this project, the hip-hop half, because I at least felt like that one was like more of like an average sort of uninteresting. But this one, the R&B one, is just more of a... It gets to the point of being so boring that I just want to change it to something else. The second disc is also home to some really bad moments here on this project. Uh, while much of this album, or these two albums, I guess, are just really consistently boring and dull, there are some moments on the second disc that stand out as being particularly uh, low points in the track listing. One of those is the track that features the Michael Jackson vocal uh, sample, and while Drake did, didn't become disrespectful towards Pusha T on this album, he, he was certainly disrespectful towards Michael Jackson on this thing, because he decides to pick out this Michael Jackson, I guess, sample, really, though he's credited as a feature, uh, that doesn't sound all that good. I mean, Michael Jackson has a good voice, but this, this sample is not him at his prime. Uh, it, it just sounds like a demo, I guess you could say, and there's also some kind of echoey effect on it that isn't making him sound all that much better. Uh, it really feels like Drake is just trying to show that Michael Jackson wasn't like a perfect vocalist all the time, which I guess, you know, it well, clearly is not what he was going for here because, you know, you don't get a Michael Jackson uh, feature on your album to show off how bad Michael Jackson is because people love Michael Jackson. Uh, I just really feel like Drake here was, wasn't doing, you know, the king of pop any sort of good favors here. And I, I, I just don't really feel like this is something that Michael Jackson would have wanted to end up on a Drake double album like 10 years after his death uh, with one of his, you know, worst performances put on recording uh, in, in the album. It just does not sound good it, and it's just, it just pretty disrespectful through and through. If Drake wanted to have a Michael Jackson sample or feature on this thing, he should have gotten a good, you know, one at at that, at least that way, it could have been a some, something that I would have been excited to hear on here, but instead, 
it, it just it's just kind of disrespectful at the end of the day. And, and the bad thing is, uh, the, the cherry on top of, of all this is that the rest of the track is probably one of the better parts of the second disc. The Drake part, the beat, are some of the better moments on here. I mean, I'm not in love with it, but it, it was one of the, the more standout moments. But that Michael Jackson feature slash sample, whatever you want to call it, was just, just did not sit with me right. And then you also have easily the worst track across both of these discs, uh, Ratchet Birthday Party, which is just, this is, the best way to describe this song is what's going to be playing at, you know, white girl Canadian Toronto, uh, Toronto birthday parties in the upcoming years, because that's exactly the demographic that this song is going to appeal towards. It's just, it's just, so silly, but like not in a good way. It's not like a good, playful kind of silly. It's like a very cringy, uh, bad type of silly. Like, I'm not sure what Drake was thinking here on this track. I guess you can kind of, uh, you know, commemorate him for trying something a little bit different here, but I would greatly appreciate if the things that he tried differently would end up sounding good. Overall, this was a project that just did not interest me. It was way too long way too bloated, and just did not have enough content to really keep it going for both discs, or even one disc even, like I said before. It really just is the culmination of everything that's been going downhill for Drake in terms of the quality of his albums over the recent years. Just all those things I mentioned before have kind of been building and building, and now they've just kind of reached a low point here on Scorpion, I feel. Uh, Drake fans, uh, hardcore Drake fans, I think you guys are going to eat this thing up because it is really just, you know, Drake. He doesn't really do anything new on here, or anything that's exciting or interesting or different from his typical stuff. So you're probably gonna eat this up, and if you do, you know, it's perfectly fine. I guess, you know, good for you. Uh, but people who aren't a fan of Drake, if you've kind of been mixed on Drake in the past, you like some of his stuff, you dislike some of his stuff like me, then I don't think you're really gonna care for this either, and it's really not worth checking out. I mean, maybe some of the tracks that I said were decent or worth listening to maybe through, like, once to see if you like it or not, but the other ones, don't, don't even bother, honestly. Yeah, but that is just my own opinion. If you guys do enjoy this thing, or if you dislike it more than I did, or you think it's average or something, it's perfectly fine, but for me, uh, this, this wasn't an enjoyable project. Uh, comment down below your thoughts on it, and while you're down there, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more music-related content, album reviews, countdown lists, all that good stuff. Make sure you, you don't miss out on it by subscribing. And stay golden.